guys, Lee here at Absolute. You join me today in the guitar workshop. I'm joined by Tom from The Bottom Line. How are you doing? How's it going, dude? Good, man, you? Head of your set at Download this Friday? This, this Saturday, yeah. Saturday? Yeah. Cool, so. cool. So today we're doing a little bit of a pedal board rebuild for Tom, just getting some stuff sorted, cleaned up. This is the board as it stands at the moment. Nothing wrong with it, but stuff stuff that you've kind of built up over the years. It just needs to be cleaner as well. And I've just got the second wireless and was thinking about how to do guitar changes through the set, either going to a rack or a pedal. So I'm um, getting a second wireless unit. Just want to put the power underneath and have everything on top nice and clean. Yeah. And then just have one item to fly as well. So if we do anything in the States again, then you know everything's just nice and compact. Simple, Done. clean. Yeah. We're going to be using the Evidence Audio monorail screw-in solderless system today for all the wiring. We've got the One Spot Pro power supply which we're going to mount underneath the board and uh, yeah assortment of pedals including switcher boxes, wireless units, all that good stuff. So we thought we'd film the process, bring you along for the ride and hopefully you can get something out of it. Yeah, it's a great little pedal. Though. Yeah. Absolutely love it. I use the... Um, I use it all the time. I've got the elect lady, the little electric mistress one. Right, okay. from the same kind of thing. So, it's good stuff. Right, there we go. That is the old board stripped, so we've got all the cable ties and power and everything off. We've got old Velcro on here, so we're gonna get that off first, and Tom's brought in some kind of pro tape, pedal board tape, which is a much better solution. So we're gonna get this off, get that on, regrip the pedals, and then start messing with layouts before we start wiring things up. I am just having a look at power supply position, see where we're going to put it. Cool, so we've just fitted the uh, the mounting bracket. We didn't have the original bracket for the, the One Spot Pro, um, although they do come with one. So what we've used was, I don't know where the packaging's gone, we had the Pedal Train um, Universal mounting bracket. So it's Velcroed on the underside, Velcro on the back of the power supply. So that's kind of nice and snug on there now. It's a fairly universal fit, because Tom's gonna potentially swap this out for a, um, a fuel tank, fuel tank that's it, yeah. at a later date, so should make it a little bit easier. We might cable tie that just for a little bit of extra security, but pretty good so far. I quite like that on this this side this time. Okay. Just because that's the one that makes a difference. <laughs> if you have too many pedals and you miss it, you got to go clean, and then suddenly the pod goes, <laughs> and everything just goes to hell. In an ideal world, that. Whether we can make that. Oh yeah, brilliant. And him. <laughs> that, can, that can go there. <laughs> okay. Basically what I do is, so the wireless will go into the AV. Mm. This will go into the tuner. Yep. That's obviously my main kill switch as well. Yep. And then tuner to noise suppressor. Mm. And then send will go into there, mm. to there, to there, and then back into the return of that. Okay. And then from there, mm. into the pog, into the phaser, into the amp. And then that's on its own. That's on. So we're just working through pedal placement at the moment and something that is a little tip to do before you even start wiring up, load your pedals up with the jack ends so that when you're actually placing things around, you can you know, maximize efficiency, maximize the space you're working with and not have to guess how much room your jacks are gonna take up because this board is already, we know it's gonna be pretty crammed so every extra millimetre of space is worth saving. So basically I'm moving the wirelesses to the pedal board just to make it easier really. Um, I thought about putting the wirelesses in a rack, but I was really worried about 
the length of the loom. I was rightly told by a couple of mates basically that you know the signal loss already from the board to the amp will be doubled if you use a rack. So by putting it here, it's eliminating that problem. And also having the AB switch here, I'm in complete control of guitar changes. So really, it's I can control my own show and make life a bit easier. So in theory, completely in theory at the minute. Right, okay, so we've just taken a little while just to get the pedal layout sorted. There's a few things we need to consider, mainly the pedals which are being used the most and the signal part. Um, the signal chain that we need to take into account. So, these two, very important. This is the last one in the chain in the front end of the amp, so it ideally needs to be at the end of the board so that Tom's loom that runs back to the amp can have easy access to it. And this guy is in the effects loop of the amp, so obviously he needs easy access to the in and out on this, again, to plug in cables from the loom. So there at the far end of the board, um, other things we need to make sure, channel switching, really important can't have any mistakes there, so that's got to be on the bottom row, nice and happen. easy. It will still happen. <laughs> and the, um, the AB selector, again, because he needs real fast changes between guitars, so you've got two wireless setups, so you can go AB, AB, and as soon as he changes, just kick that. Um, I think we've made it work, just about, but if you have a look, the pedals are literally butted up against each other as close as they can be. So yeah, next thing now, I'm going to take a picture of this, get them all off again strap some power down on the back and then we'll start wiring it up. All right, so we're just uh, trying to tidy up some um, extra power cabling. Um, we've got power adapters for both wireless units, uh, plus a four-way uh, gang power supply on the back there. Just a lot of cable, a lot of surplus cable. It's not signal cable, so it's not an issue in that sense. It's just power cable that I need a way of keeping tidy under the board. So basically using a combination of Velcro uh, and cable ties with these handy little cable tie suction mounts so you can stick those down. They give you a point to mount your cable ties on. So yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. Right, so we're moving on to the wiring stage now. As I said at the beginning of the video, we're using the uh, screw-in solderless system from Evidence Audio. Just gonna run you through the basics of wiring up a single jack end, because then we're just gonna repeat the same process for the entire board. Cool thing with this is it's solid core cable, so it's um, not only is it easy to kind of bend into shape, it's also really, really small, so we can be efficient with space and the core threads straight into the tip of the jack so you get a really really solid connection um, that's before you've even screwed the cap on and the uh, the signal is just really pure nothing nothing lost so yeah what we're going to do is we're going to start by stripping away the different layers of this cable there's a few you have to kind of rush and dole it down so we take off the outer sleeve first like that you want to get down to the next bit, so you've got the copper shielding. You want to kind of fray that out to the side. Like that, get it all on one side, and then just twist it up. Like that, bend that back. Okay, then you need to reveal the next bit as well, so it's leaving a little gap there. We're just gonna cut through the black layer. To reveal the next bit, which is white. And the last bit is just cutting through the white to reveal the copper core. Apply enough pressure to just go through the outer bit without breaking the core. And there you go, you've got the solid core in the middle. Now that is in my opinion, a little bit too long. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna snip the end off, like that. And I've got a little bit too much of the copper there for my liking, so I'm just gonna snip that off as well, like that. Now what you do from there, take your jack end. Now there is a very, very tiny hole in there, which you're probably not gonna be able to see on camera, but you can see it when you look down. We're gonna just push the copper core into the end, 
like that. And you can actually feel it click in. And then it's just a case of threading it. So it clicks and then thread like that. And that's now solid in there before I've even put the jack, uh, the cap on. What I should really do before I put this in is test it. So I'm going to do that. Test as you go along because you don't want to wire up a whole board and get to the end of it and find there's a problem. Right, there we go. I think we have a finished board. We have literally just plugged it in and just done some signal checks. Been testing it along the way and so far so good. good. So everything's kind of panned out as we originally planned. We've got all of the most important pedals along the bottom row. Um, we've got the two wireless sets up here, the two wireless receivers. So Tom's got two transmitters which are going to go obviously with the guitars. With the AB selector box he can literally just bosh, bosh as he's handed a different guitar each time. So he's in complete control of his, uh, his guitar changes. Um, we've got the DD3 which is set up here. That's not wired in, that's powered but not wired in because of course that's going in the effects loop. Signal out to the amp goes from the, uh, the moor on the end there. And just to show you what's kind of going on underneath. You've got two powers for the, uh, the Shaw wireless systems and the True Tone one spot wired in. Using all the cable ties. This is the loom to go out um, to the amp foot switcher. Yeah. Tidy. Panned out as you hoped? Yeah, no, really happy with it. It's, um, cool. It's always difficult building pedal boards, especially when you play sort of like punk rock and pop punk and stuff. You're jumping around all over the place and always breaking your neck, trying to yeah. change pedals. So it's just needed to be done. So it's something that's solid. And yeah, something it looks, that you don't it looks bulletproof. It looks really cool. So yeah, the Velcro is absolutely rock solid. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty good stuff, and it's also nice to have the the wireless just on one unit. So like I said, if we ever have to fly or anything like that, it's just one flight case. You know, well, you were saying, weren't you, now. that in your experience, you've not really seen a solution for. No, I, I, it seems to be like a bit of a, a bespoke area. It seems to be that when bands start experimenting with gear and, and get to a certain level of touring, perhaps, and they need to do guitar changes for different tunings or whatever. Mm. Until now, I've always got away with just one guitar yeah. because we all our sets been in one tuning. But now we've got a new record coming out, lots of different tunings. So I, I just had to, I had Two to step guitars. up and, and get it ready. And constant rotation. Um, I spoke to so many people, and there just didn't seem to be. Oh, that's how you do it. I spoke to lots of different people, and they all had different ideas. And yeah. it just seems that you know a lot of bands that I've seen who have got multiple systems, they've mm. just got their own bespoke way of doing it so we went through options of like rack absolutely yeah well, didn't we? but then we were just worried about obviously running a loom from the from the board uh, from the wireless in a rack from the, the amp coming all the way to the board and then running it from the board back to the amp that's just so much signal loss and like potential you say you're, well. you're now in control so you can have anyone tacking for you that's can't it you? as well yeah. Yeah. Some, some, guitar. yeah so I mean we've only just started having tech so it's a bit of a a new experience for me but I know a lot of people they only want a certain person to do it and I can yeah. totally see why because yeah. it's quite scary putting your trust that you're you know you play guitar all your life and suddenly someone's passing your guitar and you're gonna go out in front of a couple of thousand people and yeah. trust it works yeah. Um, yeah with with this I'm in complete control I can finish a song hit my tuner pass the guitar put the new guitar on hit the switch hit the tuner and I'm, I'm good to go so that one person has just got to follow a set list and a tuning list and hand it over nice and easy and also like you said for you traveling and flying and stuff having it all on one board all you've got to do it's cheaper is hire, <laughs> you've only got to hire a, a marshal literally all, literally all we've got to do now is a, a, like, tours we've done in the states in the past and stuff is you know back lines provided and we yeah. just rent ahead so I can go and rent a marshal JCM 900 yeah and step off a plane and Guitar, have that and this. not change a single thing and, and I've, I've got my exact same setup so cool. it's cheaper it's efficient it's safer it's really tidy and all in all I'm excited to see the difference from these uh, cables as well for the quality of yeah, tone loss yeah, and pieces. I recommended the evidence stuff just based on my experience um, I've been using them personally for years now and solid and as we just heard, you can yeah. plug in, we're running quite a lot of pedals, we're not using a, a true bypass switch or anything, and the, the noise floor is like way, way down, Definitely. which is just gonna be 
hopefully better for you, especially when you're playing with gain and stuff. You want to keep Absolutely. that going. So, yeah, solid. I guess time will tell now. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> if I get a phone call on Saturday, <laughs> yeah, me I'm crying in tears, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, playing download and nothing's up. working. I'm just sat on stage crying on my own. Yeah, cool. That could be a thing. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. That's been a pedalboard build. I guess plug the band. Yeah. Tell them where to. If anyone's interested, I play guitar in a band called The Bottom Line. We're playing download. We would have played download by the time this has come out and hopefully survived it with a board. Website? And, uh, yeah, all on all the socials, just The Bottom Line UK on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Cool. We'll see you next time. Nice one.